<laughs> Hi everyone. So <laughs> she's not she's not thrilled about this. I have my special chef guest Annie Banani today, who the treats are inspired after. And today I'm going to be sharing my new favorite way to make fun, easy dog treats using a brand new treat maker called the Good Bone Treat Maker from Conair Pro Pet. So if you're excited to learn more about this treat maker and get a fun recipe you can make with your dog. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button because we're about to have a ton of fun. <laughs> Do I need to take your chef hat off, Annie? I should. <laughs> okay. We can take the chef hats off. <laughs> I don't even think you can see mine. I think it's sticking out from above. <laughs> so before we get into the treat recipe, I want to show you guys all the fun details about the Good Bone Treat Maker because this is really, really cool. So Annie Banani loved me. <laughs> so I'm just going to dive in and share all the full features of the Good Bone Dog Treat Maker. So this is essentially it. This is the dog treat maker. It makes six mini dog bone treats, which I think is really, really cute. This is that non-stick surface. Um, it's, imagine like a waffle maker, you know what I mean? Something like that, but for dogs, like way cooler, way, way cooler. So it's really not that big. So you can fit and store this kind of anywhere in your kitchen, which I think is really helpful because I live in an apartment and depending on which apartment you live in, you don't always have a lot of storage. And honestly, that could be the same with your house kitchen situation. So I feel like that's a bonus. And this has the nonstick surface um, part of it here and here. And when you get it in the, uh, when you first take it out of the package, one thing they recommend is to kind of wipe it down with like a little damp cloth, just to make sure there's not any dust or anything from it just being shipped in its really cute little box. You know, just kind of like when you get a new pan, you know, nonstick pan, just clean it off really quick. And then when you go to plug it in and use it, just when you use it for the first time, know that there could be a little bit of an odor or maybe just the slightest bit of smoke. And that's just kind of normal using any nonstick surface for the first time. So just something to keep in, keep in mind. In your box, you're going to get the Good Bone Dog Treat Maker. You're going to get an instruction manual, which it comes with three recipes, which I think is awesome. Having a fun little recipe book as well as instructions for use. And then you're also getting this awesome fabric piping bag. And this works really, really well. Um, my boyfriend is the chef in the house <laughs> and he can attest that this is actually a really high quality one, which I think is really nice. So you get these things included with purchase and a little pro tip, I'm going to put it, you know, when we make the recipe, you'll probably see this too. But for me, for the piping bag, the way the hole is, as you guys can kind of see, um, or here's a better way to see the hole is actually kind of thin when you go to get it. It's very, very small. So when you're piping out the dog tree, just a little bit comes out. We ended up just cutting the tip just the slightest bit bigger, just so more of the batter could come out in our treats, and we found it to be way easier. So you don't have to do that. That is a personal preference, but I just kind of wanted to share that quick little tip while we had the piping bag. So now let's get into our fun recipe. All right, so we are going to be making a dog treat inspired by Annie, which her nickname is Annie Banani. So we're making a banana dog treat recipe, and this only has four ingredients. It's super easy to make, and I think you guys are going to like it, which also, by the way, I did a blog post review of the Good Bone Dog Treat Maker and I have another recipe in there. So if you wanna have two dog treat recipes that you can immediately make with your dog treat maker, I highly recommend checking it out. I've linked it in the description. It is a dog pancake recipe. I thought it was very fun to make. It was inspired by, you know, kind of, this kind of reminded me of like a waffle maker and I just thought it was really fun. So definitely check that out. Having two recipes to start with is a great start. So. First things first, what we're going to do is we're going to gather our ingredients. So you need one banana, one egg, oat flour, and baking powder. And we're going to get into the specifics of how much of each. So I would go ahead and grab two bowls, one for your dry ingredients, one for your wet. Use the bigger one for the dry ingredients because then we're just going to throw everything in there. <laughs> You're going to need two cups of oat flour to start. So we're going to go ahead and get in that. Also a big bowl also comes in handy when you're making a mess. <laughs> that way it goes in the bowl and not on your desk or your table. <laughs> and you're going to need one teaspoon of baking powder. So I'm gonna grab my handy dandy measuring cups, open this up, do, do, do. there we go. Tap that on in and then go ahead and mix all of that together. Um, use whatever you wanna use. Um, I have a whisk, a little, a little mini one. <laughs> I'm gonna be using that to whip it all together. There we go. And also, while you're starting your ingredients, go ahead and preheat your dog good or your good bone 
dog treat maker. I've got my little cord up here so it'll reach in my room. Perfect. Again, the red light's gonna come on. It's not hot yet, so I'm gonna show you. The red light is on and then it's going to switch to green when it's ready to go. So, okay, so now in a separate bowl, we're gonna be mixing the other ingredients. Now, I wanna do kind of a pro tip for this. This is in two parts. Well, it's kind of two pro tips then, I guess. So for your banana, you're gonna go ahead and mash it in its own bowl and everything's going to be added to this. Now, <laughs> oh, hello. I have an Annie Banani, what you can't see past the eggs. Hold on, <laughs> It's a Banani. <laughs> Again, Annie Banani. She loves bananas. I can't even like open one of these and like crack the peel without her being right there. <laughs> but that's, oh my God, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> if she, if that would have hit the ground, y'all would have seen <laughs> her go get it. All right, so to mash the banana, you can obviously use whatever you want. You can use a fork, you know, whatever. I actually, anytime I mash anything for any of my dog treat recipes, I use this in every single thing that I do. This is a cocktail muddler, as you guys can see. It's got a really good edge, and I use this for everything. I even use this to make avocado toast at home. You're gonna go ahead and mash this. Um, to me, I've just kind of seen that this works faster, and it's funny because I got this for my aunt so I could make this cocktail recipe that she made when I visited years ago. I have never made the cocktail. <laughs> I only use it to mash like vegetables and fruits, which I think is kind of funny. But you're gonna mash this up, which fun fact, mash this as good as you can when we mix everything in the batter. Just so you know, your batter might look like it, have, it has lumps in it. And if you do baking at all, you know like, oh, cake batter is supposed to have it all out it's not going away because it's a banana. So just keep that in mind when you make it all together and see lumps, it's normal. So once your banana is all mashed, just like that, now we're gonna go ahead and grab an egg. So what I like to do, and this is just my personal preference, I hate mixing up an egg in like a big bowl. I don't know, I might just be weird. Um, so I grabbed a little cup. Again, I'm just going to do it right above another bowl so I don't get any trash there. I'm gonna put this in the egg carton to throw it away. I'm gonna wipe my hands off really quickly. Much better. So now, I'm just gonna go ahead and whip up the egg. It's just easier for me to do it this way and trying to do it all with the banana. I just think that's just a lot. So once it is whipped up, you can go ahead and pour that in the bowl with the banana. And then the last ingredient that you're going to need, it's not really an ingredient, it's water. So you're going to need two thirds cup of water. Again, put it in your bowl of your banana and your egg, and then we're gonna mix all that together before combining both the dry ingredients. All right, so now you can go ahead and take your whisk and in your bowl, really mix up all those wet ingredients. And then I feel like, it, you know, it doesn't have to be super perfect. And then you're gonna put it in here. It's gonna make a plop sound, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, I'm not one that usually cares for like noises and stuff, but that one just kind of makes you go, whoo, <laughs> gives you the little heebie-jeebies. <laughs> so then your batter's going to look like this to start, and you're gonna go ahead and start mixing it all up until you have your own little batter. This only takes a couple minutes or a couple, couple seconds. I don't know why I said minutes. <laughs> it's fine, we're all fine. <laughs> takes a couple minutes or seconds. Gosh, I did it again, all right. Make sure you get all of the flour from the edges. Make sure that's good to go. Perfect, I think we're almost there. Yeah, that looks really good. All right, and again, remember I said you're gonna have some lumps. Don't worry about it, the lumps are normal. Because again, you have a mashed banana in here. So I'm gonna put all of these things to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and get it closer so you guys can see the batter. This is that consistency that you're looking for. See how you can see some lumps on kind of swirl it around just because of the angle. That's completely normal. So now we're going to grab our piping bag. Again, this is awesome. This is a super high quality piping bag. Really like it. So to do this, to fill this, recommend folding back the tip so that way as you're filling it, nothing is actually coming out. And I grab a spoon and just kind of put some in there. I found that to be kind of the easiest method just kind of hold it open a little bit like this. Again, you can hold it over the bowl. It's not gonna be, doesn't have to be super perfect. Put as much in there as you want. I'm gonna put a handful, maybe a couple spoonfuls in here. There we go. And you can add on over time, you know, do however many, however much you wanna start. So this should be good to get started. Okay, and our treat bone maker is almost done preheating, so I'm gonna put this to the side. I'm just gonna fold this this way to sit here. And so once this turns green, I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna show you how it looks from above 
feeling the treat maker and don't be worried <laughs> if it doesn't look great the first time you do it. First time I did it, I did not make dog bones because I had stuff kind of going over the edges or stuff like that. But at the end of the day, your dog doesn't care. <laughs> your dog loves to just eat the treat. So, oh, the green light just went on. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to switch this around and we're going to try it out. Okay, so now we're gonna take our Good Bone Treat Maker and our piping bag, and we're gonna go ahead and do this. I recommend holding this part up, because if you don't, it's gonna pour out the bottom. Um, not speaking from experience at all. There we go, that's looking much better. Perfect. Kinda got off to a slow start with that first one. There we go. And again, they don't have to be perfect. No worries on that. It's all for fun. Your dog's going to be eating these and they're going to have no idea that this was even like challenging for you. <laughs> they're just going to be like, this is delicious, mom. Okay, now that you've done that, you're going to go ahead and close the treat maker and the red light indicator will be on. And once it switches to green, you'll know your treats are ready. Oh, and look, they are done. Let's open it up and you guys can see how they look. Oh, they look so awesome. Look at that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and grab our plate and a spatula, and we're gonna just kinda wiggle them out. They really come out very easily. That's the nice part. Sometimes you can just kinda slide them a little bit. Obviously, don't touch that. It's a hot surface. Um, <laughs> or you can just do it that way. <laughs> just pull them out. <laughs> there we go. Whoops, perfect. Okay, so again, they're not always gonna be perfect, but look, you've got your little bone treats. And again, these are really easy to make. I mean, that didn't take any time at all, right? And you can make, a ton. Different recipes make different amounts of treats. This recipe is going to make probably at least three to four batches of this. So you have so many things that you can do. You can give it to friends. You can make them for your dogs. So many options. All right. So once you've made your treats, <laughs> see we have a visitor who's back. Obviously we have some cleaning up to do, but let them cool for a little bit. And once you have, which these have, they can enjoy. What do you think, Annie? 10 out of 10. Kiss, kiss. Okay, we can have one more. <laughs> so if you love this video and you love learning more about the Good Bone Dog Treat Maker from Conair Pro Pet and you love this recipe, definitely subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of other really fun dog treat recipes that you can make. And of course, don't forget, check out my blog post for another easy recipe that you can make for the Good Bone Dog Treat Maker. And again, these make great gifts. The, treat, the dog treat maker itself makes a great gift but so do the treats. So I hope you guys love this video. I think me and Annie are going to enjoy some more treats and we're gonna go have an awesome day and I hope you do too. Bye guys.